The number one question I'm asked is what computer do I need to use Unreal Engine 5? Well look, you don't need a $5,000 supercomputer just to run Unreal. If you already have a gaming PC, you're ready to go. After all, Unreal is just a game engine built to run on a modern PC. But for everybody else, let's walk through the best option if you're on a budget, the best option for high performance, Mac versus PC, and if you don't have a workstation right now, don't worry. Stick till the end and I'll share the easy option to connect into amazing high-end PCs just from your laptop. And I'll give my honest review of these expensive GPU laptops so you know exactly what you need to use for your next project. So whether you're using Unreal Engine for game development or to make movies and virtual production like I do, I'll help you save your time and your money by skipping through all the trial and error. Let's dive into it. What's up, my name is Josh Tunin, and I've spent the last nine years working on Hollywood visual effects. And I've used Unreal Engine on massive LED volumes for TV shows like Avatar The Last Airbender and Star Trek, and now I make animated films of my own. Now, I've been hunting for the perfect Unreal Engine workstation that solves all the painful parts of working with Unreal. So first, let's start with the most painful parts that you all know if you've worked inside of Unreal Engine, and that's compiling shaders. When you open up a project for the first time, you'll likely be stuck compiling shaders right as you're excited to jump into your project. Well, do you wanna know the best way to speed up this process? It's by having a faster CPU. The better your CPU is, the faster you'll compile shaders. But the CPU is only one half of the equation. Once you open up Unreal and you launch your scene, Unreal Engine uses your GPU to render out your viewport every single frame. These are the two critical pieces of hardware Unreal Engine uses to render your scene fast. That's why it's so important to understand both of these before dropping a ton of money on expensive hardware. Real quick, let's check out this great example from Mythbusters, where they break down the difference between that CPU and GPU. Now, CPUs are great at doing complex actions one at a time. That's why you have to wait for all of your shaders to compile one after the other. But a GPU is different because it can fire off multiple processes all at the same time just like we're seeing here. So in creating a picture like the Mona Lisa here, Unreal Engine is firing every single frame to generate a new image. Another way to think about this is the CPU is gonna load up all of our ammo and the GPU is gonna fire it every single frame. The better and faster your GPU is, the faster Unreal Engine will render, giving you higher frame rates. The better your CPU is, the faster Unreal Engine will load and compile your projects, letting you launch and reload projects faster. As a developer, you're gonna push Unreal Engine to its limits while you're building and then optimizing your game for your players. Now we're about to get into some hardware recommendations, but just know that yes, you can improve your hardware, but it's also much easier for you to simply adjust your render settings inside of Unreal to make your scene run faster, but in lower quality. That's why the most useful console command that you can use in Unreal Engine is stat GPU. So at the end of the day, you want a CPU that crunches through all those shaders fast, and you want a GPU that can handle big scenes and lots of textures. So when I make recommendations here, I'll be recommending GPUs and CPUs. So let's walk through the best budget option to run Unreal Engine 5 at home. When looking at the right GPU for Unreal, to get the most out of each dollar, you wanna focus on the GPU memory size, or the VRAM. We wanna to try to get as much VRAM as possible. So in this case, if we compare the price of these two GPUs, it'd actually be better to get this 3060 rather than a 4060 because this one has more VRAM. We have 12 gigabytes instead of eight gigabytes. Another way to think about VRAM here is that if we had this GPU with 12 gigabytes, that means we can store 12 gigabytes of textures in one scene versus the 4060 where we'd be limited to only eight gigabytes of textures for our entire scene. If you put more than eight gigabytes into your one scene, it means your GPU will crash and you can't add any more textures into your project. So you wanna look for the lowest price with the highest amount of VRAM, or if you're looking for something in the middle tier right now, you could take a look at the 5070 Ti, which has 16 gigabytes of memory for about 800 bucks. When it comes to CPUs, your best option is gonna be getting an Intel i5 14600K. This has plenty of power, but it's still really affordable for your first PC. Otherwise, another great option is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D, and both are great options for your workstation. Now for RAM, I'd recommend at least 32 gigabytes, but to be honest, this won't make a huge difference when you're working inside of Unreal. This will just give you a great rounded out workstation so you can use other programs like Blender, Maya, or other 3D software while preparing your assets for Unreal Engine. And then for storage, I'd recommend having at least a one terabyte 
SSD. If you save your projects on your SSD and load it from there, you would be shocked how much faster it is to run an Unreal project off of a local SSD versus your external hard drives when it's transferring all these files on your workstation before loading everything up. So if you want to build the best budget option, I'll leave links for all of these down below in the description. But next, let's talk about the best high performance option if budget is not a consideration and you just want the best most powerful machine. If we wanna get the best performance GPU, we should look at getting a 4090 or a 5090. Again, the most important aspect here is the amount of VRAM that we're gonna get. So this upgrade means we'll get 32 gigabytes of VRAM instead of the eight to 16 that we were gonna get with our budget option. I'll put a link down below for the best bang for buck GPU I could find out there that has 32 gigabytes of memory. 4090 and 5090 series are more focused on improvements with AI upscaling rather than pure mechanical upgrades to the hardware and performance. That's why 3090s and 3080s are still a great affordable option if you can find them. Now looking at CPUs and trying to get the best performance, I'd recommend getting the i9-14900K, an Intel processor. Otherwise, if you use AMD, I'd highly recommend the 5950X or the 9950X Ryzen 9 Threadripper. The main difference here is that the 5950 is 12 cores, whereas the 9950 is 16 cores, which when you're compiling shaders is around 25% faster. Then for RAM, I would recommend either 64 gigs or 128 if you're expecting to do lots of compositing for your visual effects. And lastly, for storage, if you can afford it, I would start out with a two terabyte or even a four terabyte SSD, and that way you don't have to worry about upgrading your machine later. You can build it once and you know it's future proof for the, your next project. This is the exact machine you'd expect to find at most studios out there with no compromises and focusing on maximum performance. Like I said, I'll leave links for everything down below and some pre-built PCs that I would recommend that are worth the money. But I can hear your next question already. Wait, this is just for a Windows machine. Can you actually run Unreal Engine on a Macintosh? And the answer, is yes. As of 2025, the most recent update here in January, there's been lots of upgrades and support so that you can run Unreal Engine 5 on a Mac computer. The thing is you need at least an M2 chip or above, and you need at least Mac OS 15. Now with a Mac computer, you have the power of path tracing, Lumen, and Nanite, and you have all of the crazy features of Unreal 5 on your Mac computer. But can you really put a huge graphics card like an RTX 3090 inside of a laptop? Well, I have had some experiences with the Razer Blade 17, and I used it as my main machine for Unreal Engine to get up and running and first learn Unreal 5. And to be honest, this totally works if your machine is gonna stay at home plugged in, not moving, but after using it along with consistent travel, using this going to and from LED stages, mine started overheating constantly. I had flickering screens and lots of crashes. So I will say, buy a laptop like this at your own risk. I can't guarantee it'll be stable for the long haul like it would be if you have a stationary workstation. But lastly, you don't need to drop thousands of dollars on a brand new machine just to get up and running with Unreal Engine. Let's talk about the remote options. Did you know that you can use a regular old laptop and simply use a remote connection into a high powered PC? Look, not everyone can instantly upgrade their machines tonight and buy thousands of dollars of hardware. So for the rest of us, you should know that you can also remote into a top of the line PC using your laptop without owning a high end PC yourself. The best service I know for this is Shadow PC. After a few minutes of setup, you can create a remote connection and use professional grade hardware for about $50 a month all from a laptop. This way you can practice, get up to speed, and start taking on freelance work and upgrade once you have the budget. Now you have everything you need to create your dream PC for Unreal Engine 5. Use the links in the description and like and subscribe down below if you learned something new. And if you wanna go from an Unreal Engine beginner to Hollywood level filmmaker, I have a 21 day Unreal 5 bootcamp, Unreal Fundamentals, where I'll teach you all of my Hollywood visual effects secrets along the way. Otherwise, watch how I made this ad for the Super Nintendo Switch in just 24 hours using Unreal Engine 5. See you next time, peace.